Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our daily get-together live on Facebook, 10.30 in the morning every day for local English-speaking folks here in Puerto Vallarta. We get together to exchange news, headlines, stories, suggestions, inspiration, creativity, so that our lives here in Puerto Vallarta are fuller, are richer, given the circumstances that we live in. Um, it's always great to see folks that come back every single day or most days. Uh, it's it's nice to feel like you're part of a fun bunch, fun community. If you're new, feel free to let us know that you're new by writing the words new, the word new in your comments. Let, her know, let us know where you're from. Let us know how you found out about um, coffee and headlines. And before I dive into today, I am going to uh, share this epiphany that I had just like literally two minutes ago. I was thinking about uh, two or three very nice folks that have reached out to me in the past week and have said, we are so happy that we found coffee and headlines. We are so much enjoying the show and we're looking forward to moving to Puerto Vallarta in the near future. And I thought to myself, well, this is so funny because, I mean, we are here gathered as English-speaking locals. We're not, we've never been about visitors, although we welcome the occasional adventurous visitor like Dave Van Pelt and, and folks like that. And we have also not been necessarily a, a resource um, for people that want to retire or relocate to Puerto Vallarta. There are many resources that address those needs or those communities elsewhere. But I figured today is Saturday. Tomorrow is Sunday fun day. We have people that are looking forward to moving here Maybe what we need to do is dedicate Sunday Fun Day to uh, <laughs> explaining to those folks that say that they want to move here um, what it's really like to live in Puerto Vallarta. And um, we'll, I think that's what we're going to do tomorrow. We'll take a little bit of humor into the mix and we'll take a look at... Uh, the trials and tribulations that, um, and the adventures and the awesome stuff that as locals we go through on a daily basis as we navigate our new lives in Puerto Vallarta. So hopefully if we do that tomorrow, we will be able to assist uh, some people that are looking to make plans to move here, or maybe we will uh, rid them of their misery and we will save them some money, some pesos, so that they can move elsewhere if their expectations are not realistic. I don't know what you think about that, but I think it would be a fun idea um, to talk to people about uh, what it's like to really live here as locals. So that should be an interesting topic. I'm itching to hear your suggestions or your comments about that, and then we can tackle it with full enthusiasm tomorrow. Um, I see a new person. Hello, Rick. It's nice to see you join us. Rick is in Bucerías. I hope you guys in, in, in Bahia de Banderas are doing okay. I know things have been a little bit more problematic for you than for us down here. Uh, speaking of Dave Van Pelt, um, Dave Van Pelt is reporting from Las Vegas. Oh, 113 degrees. That is definitely nasty. I wouldn't want to be in that kind of weather. Um, anyhow, uh, I see Joey is in the house. Dave, Marge, Julie. I see a lot of... Um, people. Um, and I'm glad that Claude is chiming in and uh, and Sherry is also chiming in about tomorrow. So make sure that tomorrow you bring in your nastiest, nastiest <laughs> adventures of what it's really like to live in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, because it is for some people, it is not for everyone. Um, and um, you, you have to know the tea, you have to know the truth. And I have Friends that have moved here and have soared and have done very well. And then every now and then we chuckle and look at some people that moved here with really grandiose expectations or different expectations than what it's like to. I see, there's another one, Thomas Hicks. Um, we plan to retire to PV. Well, don't be scared, Thomas. Come back tomorrow. Sunday is Sunday fun day. We don't talk about news. We talk about our everything but news tomorrow. So tomorrow, let's have... Our best, our best and nastiest realities about living in Puerto Vallarta together for all these kind folk, folks that think uh, they want to retire here. But now let us take a look at the news. Today we have a lot of news 
concerning um, Mexican governors versus Hugo Lopez Gatel. We have news about a new face mask campaign that Jalisco is undertaking. And uh, we have, uh, oh gosh, more news about Trump against the Chinese and fashionable face masks that are coming down the line that include Bluetooth and applications. Don't ask. Um, oh, there's another mover, Sean Wirt. Good morning, Sean. Husband and I are moving down in September. You may regret. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, this is going to be so much fun. Um, this is going to be so much fun because tomorrow, in fact, okay, I'm going to bring an assistant tomorrow. My friend, he doesn't know this, but I'm going to try to draft my friend Paul Christ to co-host tomorrow, Sunday, fun day. And, uh, oh, oh, there's another one. See, here I was thinking that you guys are all locals and, uh, we see, uh, some future locals lurking in the house. You are so more than welcome to be here. And, and, you know, if you find something useful at Coffee and Headlines, that's awesome. If not, you know, the beautiful thing about Vallarta, um, and for that matter, the whole Bay, is that there's, within the English-speaking community and all the other communities, there are micro-communities for everybody. And some people will tell you some things, other people will tell you others. We here at, at Coffee and Headlines, we thrive on trying to be kind to one another and be productive and constructive and inspiring. But we'll also tell you the truth, and that's... Um, that's just the way we are. Anyhow, let us dive into the news uh, and take it. Oh, another one. Mark McMillan, my partner and I are moving later this month. I'm just now curious as to where are you all coming from or running away from or whatever. But, um, um, oh, and, and Pegeen White will tell us why she left. Awesome. So tomorrow could turn out to be um, a really interesting um, broadcast. Oh my God, I love your feedback. Uh, and yes, Maddie Bishop says co-hosting with Paul. Well, I'll let know. I'll let Paul know that that he is he has the invitation. If he's around, maybe we can co-host this Sunday Fun Day edition. Um, which, as you know, um, nothing is sacred. No one is safe. Um, but no pies in the face. Let's jump into the news. Not that it should matter that much, <clears throat> because clearly our governor has decided to dance to his own tune as far as COVID-19 guidelines, but the folks in Mexico City, the Federation has once again put our state in the red for COVID-19. Uh, this means that by the Federation's book, only essential businesses should be open. We know for a fact that uh, some weeks ago, um, our governor gave Hugo lopez Gatel the pinky, not the middle finger, but definitely the pinky, saying, well, we're going to dance to our own tune, and that's just the way it is. But, in fact, um, he has been, our governor, has been making a lot of noise about uh, the fact that uh, Hugo lopez Gatel should be fired from his position. To that matter, he is one of 10 governors that sent out a letter saying uh, we respectfully uh, don't think the guy is doing the job that he's supposed to be doing and people are dying and so forth and so on, and we all want him to go away. Um, this was, re was, was acknowledged by Hugo lopez Gatel, who said, I respect you and I hope that we can continue to collaborate. Um, Hugo lopez Gatel. Um, explains, well, I understand everybody's under stress and under pressure. All these governors didn't ask to have to make health-related decisions, and now they're having to do that. But um, there's some interesting backstory going on here, or at least I found it interesting. And this comes thanks to Salvador Garcia Soto, a journalist from El Universal, who gives us a little bit of context as to what's going on. You see, back on Thursday, um, the whole community of governors in Mexico had their weekly um, video conference with Hugo lopez Gatel. Um, they have this every Thursday. And apparently Hugo lopez Gatel was joined by a lawyer from, let me see, where is this? Da, 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 da. He was joined by a lawyer from his organization. 
And this lawyer from his organization hinted to the effect that if the governors of all the states were not going to respect the federal stop sign, they should be penalized. And the governor's response was essentially, and I'm going to say bluntly, I mean, who the fuck are you to come penalize us when we're doing all this extra work that they, we didn't wish to do? Uh, so things got a little heated, apparently, between Hugo lopez Gatel and the governor. So if the governors are now not feeling very warm and cozy about Hugo lopez Gatel, it is understandable. Um, the interesting thing, and this is a little bit of commentary, is that it's not like the governors are suggesting or have come up with names of who would be better equipped to handle the pandemic in Mexico than Hugo lopez Gatel. Um, very much as though in the United States, governors decided that Anthony Fauci should be dismissed, but replaced by whom? So uh, it's, it's Mexican politics as usual. And of course, I don't think anything is going to change. And uh, oh no, you and Paul with wigs and sunglasses, we did that for the queer week. I don't know that we can do that for coffee and headlines, Ellen, um, but I'll come prepared. Maybe, maybe we just will. Who knows? <laughs> Anyhow, back to the headlines. Um, Puerto Vallarta joins a new, quote-unquote, historic campaign called We Are Together and We're Wearing It Right. And uh, that sounds kinky, I know, but this has to do with face masks. Uh, we are together and we're wearing our face masks. Right is the new campaign that has been launched by the state of Jalisco. It's a statewide campaign in which it, what is looked for is that everybody will wear the face mask. Uh, this is the new logo for the campaign. Yesterday afternoon, the governor uh, launched an invitation to a new initiative where the government is joined by business organizations, universities, unions, uh, um, or other organizations, communication sources, and different organizations and, and institutions in Jalisco to promote the use of face, uh, face masks throughout the state. Um, now, they're not sparing much um, of anything in this campaign. Here is a photograph of the Diana sculpture. This is a huge monumental sculpture with a fountain that you can see whenever you're driving into Guadalajara City. And as you can see, um, there is a face mask on her. Yesterday, people started tweeting photographs of, of La Diana, uh, thinking that she, uh, La Diana surrounded by scaffolding, thinking, well, she's probably going to be refurbished or something. And no, um, what they did is they put scaffolding just to place this ginormous, yes, I said ginormous again, face mask around her, and the face mask, mask says, salva lo que amas, save what you love. And that is what the campaign is all about. Uh, we also learned through the news sources that the tourism secretary in the state of Jalisco is trusting that the um, number of visitors will increase in Puerto Vallarta during the month of August. Presently, uh, hotel occupation throughout the weekend is uh, between 24 and 25 percent, 25 percent being the, 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 the limit. And uh, it also states that during weekdays, we've had an occupation of between 12 and 15 percent. So it is hoped that um, the number of visitors and tourism will increase, at least national tourism will during this coming month that starts today. Today is August 1st, and we're all of a sudden we find ourselves halfway through the summer. Who knew? I mean, time is flying by. Anyhow, uh, moving forward with the news. Yesterday we reported that a city in Baja California had um, announced mandatory or obligatory use of face masks. Now the city of San Luis Potosí is looking for a similar um, legislation in which they would make uh, face masks mandatory. I share this because it makes me wonder just how many more Mexican cities are going to start challenging, or maybe not challenging, but 
finding a way to maneuver through the legal system so that they can take individual decisions as cities when it comes to whether face mask uh, use should be obligatory or mandatory or suggested or what. Needless to say, we know that face masks save lives and we know to wear a face mask wherever we go because we lead by example, or at least we try to. Um, I also mentioned a couple of days ago that the city of Puerto Vallarta hired a couple of YouTube influencers, Mexican YouTube influencers, to come to Puerto Vallarta and saunter around the city to promote it on social media. Well, uh, the city of Guanajuato has hired one of the same influencers, Luisito Comunica, uh, is his, his program's name. But the curious thing as, is that the governor... Uh, has been very uh, strict about public face mask use, but how somehow managed to be persuaded by the influencer who wanted to influence without wearing a face mask. Um, I don't know how much of good influence is that, but um, but that's just the way that goes. Um, I personally don't get why all these um, leaders of any level. Um, or influencers of any level uh, want to preach, but not by example. Of course, the governor hired this guy so that uh, he would help um, alleviate the problems with the fact that the Cervantino Festival has been modified to be an online festival only, and this has humongous impact, adverse impact on the tourism industry in, well, in, uh, in Guanajuato City and in San Miguel de Allende. And uh, that's pretty much all the more formal news that I have to share. Let me take a quick look at your comments to see if we need to address anything in particular. Um, bam, ba -dum, bam, 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 bam. Um, thank you, Logan, for that. Um, well, you know, if you're in the neighborhood, I think what's going to happen is, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let me contact you privately because you may want to be part of this um, this live if you're in the neighborhood and chances are that we're going to be broadcasting Sunday Funday from Hotel Mercurio. So if you are in the neighborhood, um, maybe it should be the three of us. I'll have to look for extra sunglasses and wigs and stuff. Uh, let's take a quick look. Um, let's see. Visited in October. Boy, was it hot. Well, yeah, I mean, this is that time of the year uh, in which it's hot and humid, and unless you are used to it or you're willing to cope with it, it can be a little bit challenging. Um, da, 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 da. More funny stories volunteered <laughs> for tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how would I like to help judge next year's Chili Cook-Off, Puerto Vallarta's Chili Cook-Off? Um, I will tell you something, Jim. I don't know what your affiliation with the Chili Cook-Off is or was. Last year, I got into a lot of flack because when I went to the Chili Cook-Off, all I saw was styrofoam. And I wrote about it in my website. And, um, and of course, it polarized a number of people. Some people... Uh, got into an attitude of, of who the fuck are you to, to comment on our use of styrofoam and other people that are more environmentally sound that said, uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Because the use of uh, styrofoam, in my opinion, during last year's chili cook-up was absolutely irresponsible. Would I help judge this year? I would help judge this year and I would gladly promote the chili cook-off if the organization makes a public positive stance on using environmentally sound products during the event. I really hope you guys do, or they do, because, because you know, it's important. So if you're involved in the organization, send me a message. I would love to collaborate, but only if you guys stay away from styrofoam. Styrofoam is not good for the environment. Um, other than that, the chili was awesome, but styrofoam, bad call, guys, bad call. But hey, we all learn. We all live and learn. So hopefully, no more styrofoam at the chili cookout. Uh, let's take a quick look. Bam, ba -dum, bam, 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 bam. Community. Oh my God, 230 people. Where do you guys find us? Good heavens. Um, 
Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Sunday Funday Drag Coffee House. I'm scared. I'm scared of you guys. Um, uh, let's see. I was at the airport yesterday and many employees were not wearing face masks. That is unfortunate. Yes, we know that under the nose is just as good as nothing. Uh, I tend to agree with you, Michelle. Um, Dr. Gattel, like Dr. Fauci, uh, you know, they're, they're human. You know, they're imperfect as anybody else. They're dealing with a virus that is new, that nobody had ever dealt with before, that is very pervasive, that is very contagious. Of course, there's going to be changes in policy, and of course, there's going to be people that get frustrated and, and lash out. So, you know, it's one of those things. Um, I see my dear friend Earl uh, commenting from Provincetown. Earl, it's always great to read you. There was a great article. I was going to share this, but I didn't know if it would have a lot of relevance to our community. But the New York Times just published a beautiful article about how Provincetown, Massachusetts, a destination that is well known and well regarded as a gay uh, destination, an LGBT friendly destination, is really banding together to protect its integrity by gently mandating face masks, by um, persuading the community to do so. Uh, the article was really inspiring because it shows how performing arts venues and drag performers and artists are all trying to cope in the best possible way to keep the town safe. And I thought I, that was absolutely wonderful. <clears throat> Any thoughts on why the local authorities won't enforce the mask mandate? William, I think it's a complicated issue, and this is my personal view. Number one, the person, the government locally is grossly understaffed. Um, this is something that has been very clear to me and to anyone that lives here. They are understaffed, number one. Number two, they are unprepared. And this is a horrible generalization. You know, we watch television and we watch movies and we think that the police are trained um, and that the police have sound authority and that the police understand creative thinking. Reality shows us otherwise. I don't mean to put down our police uh, staff, but it's not like they are very good on creative thinking. I mean, they, they are, they're not very good on creative thinking. Let's just say that. So that's a second aspect to keep in mind. You know, I mean, when it comes to hiring people, they don't necessarily know how to make decisions or how to make difficult decisions on the spot. And number three, and we talked about this a few days, um, a few days earlier, um, face mask in the United States, for example, has become a political statement uh, along the lines of, as I understand it, I'm not even American and I live down here, but as I understand it, people are like, you know, you cannot take away our freedom from us, so I'm not wearing a mask. Well, down here, you have to think that culturally speaking, Mexico has been an oppressed civilization since the Spaniards conquered. And we have been dealt government after government after government that a lot of Mexicans have a difficult time having faith on or believing in. So when the government comes and says, you have to do this, it's not, un it's not um, unexpected for many members of the population to disbelieve and, and, and to challenge the government. And then when a lot of well-intended people come here from other countries and try to gently persuade locals uh, to follow the guidelines, the situation becomes even more effervescent. And, and not, effervescent would be a positive thing. Uh, it becomes more ebull ebullient, more, more complicated, you know? So, why are local authorities not enforcing the mask mandate? You know, they're doing the best they can, but trust me, they're not getting good results because that's the way people are, unfortunately. I'm not justifying anyone, but it's it's just the way people are. Um, oh, lots of kind words. Thank you very much to you all. Uh, thank you for chiming in on that. Um, Oh, this is great news to hear, Jim Sullivan. If It's great to hear that you guys are sourcing new products. I am sure that 
non-styrofoam products are going to be more expensive, but I think if you ask my opinion, which you haven't asked for, but I think if the chili cookout made a whole campaign of how you are pro-environment and really sold the experience as an environmentally friendly experience, a responsible event, you would not only please Mother Earth, but you may end up attracting a whole new community of chili enthusiasts that don't even know about the event. I would certainly want to promote that, and I would certainly stand behind you. Um, yay. Uh, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Candace was there last year because uh, she, I took a, she was the only person I photographed because I, she was the one who brought her own container in her own silverware to try the different chilies. And, um, and um, you know, that's the way it went. And if you want to read about it, it's on my website somewhere. Um, boy, did I make some people unhappy. Uh, to be an influencer while not influencing the use of a face mask, you've got to be under the influence. Oh, that's a great pun and great use of words. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see. Uh, more comments about tomorrow. You guys are awesome. I'm going to shoot through this really quickly because I love it when you have like all kinds of really um, interesting things to share. Uh, uh, yay! More comments about Provincetown. This is wonderful. Are employees at the hotels required to wear face masks? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And I know that because I'm a frequent visitor of my friend Paul's Hotel Mercurio, and they are always wearing face masks because they know that reglamentos could walk in any time, at any time and, uh, and, and, and chastise them for not doing so. Um, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Michal chimes in on that, which is great to know. And I've gotten to the end of, uh, the comments. So let me move forward to the leisurely stuff. I hope you guys are enjoying this. As always, we start with the weather. Right now, it's a balmy 27 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It feels like 31 Celsius because humidity is high, 89%. And, uh, ooh, I see a comment that I want to get back to. Um, Kathleen is, Kathleen's comment is really good. Um, humidity, 89%. We have a 5% chance of rain, and we hope that that'll be the case. And uh, let's look at the weather forecast. We are looking at rain in the morning. According to this, it was not raining today, but I hope it rains. Tomorrow, humid and partly cloudy through the day. Um, and of course, Monday, humid and mostly cloudy through the day. And before I forget, I wanted to chime in on this, which I saw, because I've been forgetting to talk about Freddy's. Freddy's Toucan is an institution in Puerto Vallarta. And uh, of course, their location on Basilio Vadillo has been a very popular uh, restaurant for years, for years, for years. And Freddie went ahead and built this new location in Fluvial, and I went and took a photograph of it months ago before the pandemic started. And yes, I heard through the grapevine that it that they opened, and uh, and I heard that it's really good. I think it's really popular, so the wait might be a little long to be able to get in and enjoy the restaurant. But this is. This is something that I understand is a really beautiful location. They, the, the, the building is enormous. Um, I wonder if he now regrets having built such a big place. But um, but it is it is a good thing. If anybody has tried the new Freddy's Toucan in Fluvial, I'd love to hear comments about this and uh, and keep us posted about it. Uh, and yes, um, Shelley says that it was very busy over the over the. Um, I don't know what day you went, but yes, it's it's a very very popular restaurant for breakfast and lunch in, among locals, English speaking and Spanish speaking. So it's definitely something you want to try um, and something that, that I recommend, even though I haven't been to the new location. Um, speaking of recommendations, I went back to Cha. I went back to Cha, the small breakfast lunch restaurant in Versailles, and I was again blown away by their food. I can now say that Cha serves the best chicken mole enchiladas I've tried in my life. And it, something really interesting happened 
I was there with a friend of mine who's a very good cook, and she ordered um, the chicken enchiladas, not the mole sauce, but the green salsa sauce. And she noticed something that would have gone right by my head. When I mentioned to her that the chef had been trained in French restaurants in Guadalajara, she says to me, well, that explains the chicken. And I said, what do you mean by that? Well, the shredded chicken in her chicken enchiladas, not only was a large amount of it, but also you could see fine herbs in the chicken, fine herbs. And it is not common for Mexican, unless you're a high-end Mexican restaurant, to throw fine herbs into chicken when you're making enchiladas. So it was a little touch, a little subtle thing that you wouldn't notice, but the flavor of their enchiladas is absolutely delicious. So I'm going to stop raving about this restaurant, but I certainly hope you guys will visit it at some point. It's called Cha, and it is in uh, in Colonia Versalles. Back to our headlines. Um, if you're wondering what this is all about, you know, I love the fact that I can distance myself from international politics and then come back a few days later and um, and find that uh, Vox has put together an article that explains everything that I've missed. Apparently, uh, Donald Trump now has a thing against TikTok, and it has more to do with the fact that it is owned by a Chinese company than anything else. So if you want to learn um, about this, there is an article for you. Um, now, okay, check this out. And I looked at the prices. There is this new state-of-the-art um face mask that you can order that has Bluetooth and it comes with an app that tracks how many microbes it can catch and it is more expensive than my monthly rent. Um, and I just thought I'd let you know how some people are starting to go a little nutty with their masks. And um, yes, I can share this link if I have to, although I don't think you guys should be spending that kind of money on a face mask. I would set up for one of these. Because now you can go into Amazon.com and buy an LED party face mask for all those parties that we're not allowed to go to because they're illegal. And this one's only $32.99 US, so it's not so bad. Um, I also want to share the fact that um, Alan Parker, director of Midnight Express and Fame and Evita and a bunch of other wonderful films that influenced my youth, hopefully, they also influence yours. He's passed away at uh, 76. If this was reported yesterday. I found an article from uh, PBS that is very, very kind and it is, gives us a little bit of insight into his work. And it gives us, of course, great excuses to go back and watch these iconic films. Um, last but not least, I discovered that there's a new nonprofit in Mexico called the Tortilla Foundation. And unfortunately, the website is all in Spanish, but just, at look, but just by looking at the care with which they have peppered their website with beautiful images, um, I know, because I did some reading, that the, the, the purpose of this organization is to rescue and preserve the tradition of eating corn. And of course, corn and tortillas are a staple in the Mexican diet. There's all kinds of different corns. Corns come in many colors and shapes, and different corns are used for pozole and for uh, popcorn and for tortillas and for beverages as well. So this is going to be a website that I'm going to be exploring just to see what kind of ideas and inspiration I can get from it to share news and content with you guys. Uh, let me take a quick look at your comments before we wrap this up. Uh, la, 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 la. Do, 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 do. Um, hmm. Good morning. Okay, we went through that. The Fluvial location is very beautiful. This refers to Freddy's Toucan, and they are packed, but there's plenty of space between the tables. That's good to know. Thank you very much. Thank you for your remarks, Mark. I um, appreciate them. They're also they're very nurturing. I really appreciate them. Um, the new Freddy's is located near Plaza Caracol um, on, I don't know the name of the street, but you could walk to it. It's like three blocks away from Plaza Caracol. Um, uh, thank you for checking out, Terry. I hope to see you again soon. Um, again, 
I, I wish they delivered too. I don't know that they don't deliver or they do deliver, Helen, but it is absolutely wonderful. Um, comments about Donald Trump. Good heavens. More comments about Donald Trump. Uh, nina, 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 nina. Thank you very much for that, Ricardo. Yes, I just discovered this Tortilla Foundation and, uh, and very much look forward to exploring it. And Catherine comments that you can order from Cha through Rappi. Uh, what I will do is I will link, I think I wrote an article. Yes, I wrote something about Cha on my website. I will look for the article and link it again, and I will share a, a link to their Facebook page so you can learn more about their food, their menus. It was so wonderful. Aside from the enjoying the food, and just to wrap it up, I had a wonderful conversation with the chef, and the chef is, he's young. I don't think he's even 30. Uh, or maybe he's 30-something. He's really, really young. And we started co having a conversation about what he's trying out and this and that and the other. And he started talking about these tortas that he's making. And that developed into a conversation about the different types of tortas that you can get in different parts of the country. And just hearing him talk about his exploration um, was so inspiring. And I reminded him that that at a restaurant, there will be people that walk in and they will go, you know, just, just feed us. We don't want to hear the context. But so many people, I said to him, you know, I am part of this wonderful community called Coffee and Headlines, where a lot of people want to hear the context. They want to hear the backstory about stuff. And in the case of a restaurant, of course, there are a lot of people that are curious about how we eat and why we eat what we eat. So, um, He's bilingual, so I can bet you that going to visit him at his restaurant will provide you with all kinds of interesting experiences and anecdotal stuff. With that said, I thank you, as always, for being here with us today, <clears throat> for joining the community, for spreading good ideas and good comments and suggestions. If you found something that inspired you, that made you laugh, that gave you new thoughts on what to do, um, please feel free to contribute to our community. This is a community-based project. And uh, thank you very much for being here today. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow where we will go and get nasty and dirty about the reality of uh, living here in Puerto Vallarta as an English-speaking person. Between now and then, stay healthy, stay safe, stay happy, stay kind, and stay in touch. Have a great Saturday.